there. But I also know, hallelujah, how glorious it is to come back. I know how good it is to get back to the altar and get the anointing that I once had. You see, for eight years I didn't have it. For eight years I was following flesh. But let me say this, when I came back and God wept, welcomed me with open arms and he put that anointing back on me. He didn't, I didn't get it overnight. I had to believe and pray and study and work for it and work for it and work for it. But he gave me back the anointing because that was my desire. I said, God, if you give me the anointing, I'll proclaim the gospel anywhere you send me. I'll go around the world to, to win one soul to Jesus. I said, I'll not back down and I'll not be ashamed of your word. Whatsoever I hear is what I'll shout. And for over 25 years, I've been doing that. And I've got a lot of enemies and I praise God for every one of them because it's my goal, hallelujah, to win them to Jesus Christ. And the Bible told me to rejoice and be all glad because, hallelujah, if they hate me, I praise the Lord, they hated Jesus. They hated Paul. They hated every man that will stand on the word of God because it's not what the, the people want to, to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear a lie. When the anointing left the house, when the anointing left the congregation, the devil moved in. Preacher, what's that got to do with me? A whole lot. But as long as you're around a group of Christians, you'll be bold. You can stand up in church and say, I'm going to stand for Jesus. Praise God. But when you're out there by yourself and the demons of hell come around, the devils of hell start gathering around you, and Satan goes to messing with your mind, you get weaker and weaker and weaker. And there's many joining by television. I want to tell you something. Have you ever seen a campfire? You can put all the logs together. I've said this before. You can stack the logs up and set a fire to it, and you'll have a hot, flamey fire. But you take one log off of that fire. As long as they're together, you've got a lot of heat and a fl big fire. Take one log off and throw it over there by itself and see what happens to it. It'll go out. The flame will go out. It'll get cold, and after a while, you can walk over and pick it up. The others are still burning. But that and there will go out. Why? Because it's left the group. And this is why I'm telling it. it's so important to be in the house of God. It's so important to study and seek God's word. It's so important to, to build up that spiritual man because one day uh, you may be cast aside. One day you may be out there by yourself uh, and you're not going to have a pastor. You're not going to have a preacher. You're not going to have brothers and sisters to help you. You're going to be called all along. Uh, and the only way you can get through is to call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, and when you call upon Jesus, uh, if you're walking and you have him in your heart, uh, he He's going to hear your prayer. He's going to answer your prayer and set you free because God wants each and every one of us to be obedient. He wants each and every one of us to walk by faith. Abraham went up that morning. He had one son. His name was Ishmael. And about 13, 14 years later, he had another son, and he named him Isaac. But you see, Isaac came by the promise. God said, I'm going to give you a son. And Abraham and his wife Sarah kind of doubted. And Abraham was dead to his body. He was 100 years years old and and uh, uh, his wife Sarah was old uh, but let me tell you something they still knew uh, that if God said it hallelujah he would do it uh, and they had Isaac uh, and God called him your only son uh, when he told Abraham uh, he said Abraham uh, I want you to take your only son uh, and God knew that Ishmael was a Abraham's son uh, but he said uh, he said uh, uh, Abraham uh, I want you to take your only son uh, and go up to the mountain and I want you to offer your only son uh, to me I'll show you the mountain when you get there and let me tell you this uh, Abraham was obedient uh, why because he knew that God had said uh, your son is going to have many many children uh, and your chill your son's children are going to be blessed uh, they're going to be as the stars of the sky and they're going to be as the sand of the sea but Abraham walked by faith church uh, he didn't look to the right or to the left uh, he followed the spirit was in him uh, and they went to the mountain uh, and the lad had to be a pretty good sized man uh, at this time but uh, they because they laid all the wood on his back uh, and he carried the wood up the mountain and he looked to his father and he said God he said father Abraham he said where is the sacrifice where is the lamb and Abraham said God will provide down at the foot of the mountain God will provide himself a sacrifice went to the top of the mountain you know the story he laid Isaac on the altar and he said it bound him. The Bible says he bound his son. Now, this son is fairly a grown man at this time, at least a teenager. 
Abraham grabbed him and bound him. The hardest thing in the world that a person could do is wait 100 years for a son. Get that son, and then God says, offer him. But Abraham knew something about God. He had a relationship with God, and he listened to God when God spoke. Abraham pulled out the knife and got ready to offer his son. And the angel of the Lord said, don't touch him. Don't hinder him. Don't hurt him. We now know that you're sincere. You see, we have trials and tests come our way. In Genesis, the Bible says that God tempted Abraham. He didn't tempt him with evil, but he tempted him to try his faith. And sometimes we have storms come in our lives. Sometimes we have situations come in our lives to where we're, God wants to see what we're going to do, how we're going to handle it. And praise God, when we pass the test, the anointing grows stronger. And church, that's what God wants you to have today. He wants you to have the faith that Abraham had. Because let me say this, as the angel stopped Abraham, it says that Abraham turned around and looked behind him. He didn't look in front of him. He didn't look to the right or to the left, but he looked behind him. And he saw a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. You see, God didn't allow him to see it so he would stop the knife. It was happening already. God had already sent the lamb, the ram to get hung in the bushes and I'm telling you when the storm starts coming don't look at the storm because God's already prepared a way he's already brought the sacrifice he's already took care of the problem there's been many times in this congregation in this church that I've told you how we had needs but God always had already prepared the heart of someone to meet that need and that's the same way it was with Abraham God had already prepared the sacrifice and I'm telling you today that no matter what you have need of the Lord says that he'll provide it if you can only believe he can pour it out upon you greater than any man can he can carry you further he can take care of you he is the way today he's the way to heaven for you and he'll tell you I am the way saith the Lord and I am the way for you to get to heaven I am the way that you can be healed saith God I am the way that can bless your finances saith the Lord I am the way that can deliver you I am the way hallelujah to deliver you from the hand of the enemy I am the way to bind the enemy. I am the way hallelujah to take you where you need to go and when you need to be there. I'm always on time saith the Lord. I'm always there. I'm there 24 7 and I will protect you in the wee hours of the morning when you lay in your bed. I'm there watching over you in the wee hours of the day when you're out serving self and serving flesh. I'm there watching over you and when you come to my house and you start trusting me saith the Lord. I'm there to watch over you. And if you'll seek my face and repent of your sins, I will heal your body. I will heal your family. I will deliver you from the pits of hell. I will deliver you from the powers of the enemy. I will walk with you. I will talk with you. I will sup with you. And praise God, I will watch over you all the days of your life, saith the Lord. He will take you. He will help you. All we have to do is trust in him. A church today, God God's got a message for his children. We shall not be cast down. We shall not be overrun. We shall take a stand in the last days. And the anointing of Almighty God was going to see us through. We're going to march forward with victory. We're not going to be slowed down by the enemy. We're going to go fast forward. And God's going to show this world. He's going to show the enemy that his children are going to prevail. He's going to provide for us when pestilence is all over the earth. Our covered will will be full when everybody else is going hungry. We shall be filled when everyone else is going broke. We shall be blessed when all the hell...